Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jan Klusak, and I would like to present the comparison of lifetimes of two stainless steels. Uh, these are the designations of these steels, and uh, we subjected these steels to ultrasonic pedic loading. This is work of me and my colleagues, uh, Kamila Kozakova, Michal Jambor, and Stanislav Seitl, and all we are from the Institute of Physics of Materials from the Czech Academy of Sciences in Brno. Well, this is the outline of my presentation, where the main points uh, will be the fatigue life curves and then also frequency dependence during the tests. So, uh, as I have told, uh, we have studied these two stainless steels. Uh, these are two designations for, for both steels. And uh, if you don't mind, for simplicity, I will only, uh, I will only use uh, the steel number six and the steel number seven. Uh, these uh, steels are authentic stainless steels and uh, they are the most versatile and widely used stainless steels in food processing, chemical industry, petrochemicals, but now also in mechanical and uh, civil engineering. There is a new trend uh, to use uh, these stainless steels uh, for bridge structures and other constructions. Uh, this is advantages for their corrosion resistance and also for good mechanical properties. Uh, as the constructions are loaded uh, cyclically, uh, we are interested in fatigue behavior, fatigue response of these uh, steels. Uh, the material is, uh, both steels are chromium nickel steels, uh, where uh, the steel number six is more highly alloyed and uh, thus uh, more corrosion resistant than the steel number seven. Uh, here you can see uh, EBSD uh, micrographs uh, where you can see that the both steels have similar microstructure uh, with a large number of annealing twins uh, and also uh, delta ferrite uh, stringers along the rolling direction. Uh, main grain size uh, of both steels was uh, similar and it was about 60 micrometers. Uh, as I have said, uh, we uh, used high frequency fatigue testing uh, at, uh, at ultrasonic frequency 20 kilohertz. Uh, Maybe you know that uh, the specimens for these tests must be precisely adjusted to exhibit uh, the intrinsic frequency uh, near to 20 kilohertz. So uh, the dimensions of the specimens uh, were calculated to have uh, the intrinsic frequency 20 kilohertz. Uh, you can see that the, the diameter in the central part of the specimen is three millimeters, and the head's uh, diameters are 10 millimeters, and the lens is adjusted to the frequency. Uh, during the fast uh, loading uh, of the outstanding steels, uh, extensive heat generation occurs, so uh, the specimen must be cooled during uh, testing uh, actually, we have used uh, water cooling uh, with closed circuit uh, of water. And now the results of uh, our study. Uh, the main result was uh, the SN curve uh, for both steels. Uh, you can see in the graph that uh, here, here the, the black points are uh, the, the, SN, is the SN curve of uh, steel number six and gray points correspond to the steel number seven. Uh, you can uh, see the slightly higher lifetime of the steel number six than uh, steel seven. 
although you can uh, see that uh, in the case of steel, steel number six, we have uh, around 270 megapascals. We have uh, two regions where the steel has failed. Uh, one was below uh, a million of cycles, and uh, the second uh, region of failure was uh, in the gigacycle fatigue region. Uh, this was not observed in uh, the case of steel number seven. Uh, here only uh, failure uh, up to 10 billion of cycles has occurred and then uh, we can say that this steel has a classical uh, fatigue limit. Uh, and finally, uh, all the tests uh, were uh, terminated uh, at uh, the 10 billion of cycles, which was considered as runouts. It could be the end, but, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to mention uh, one more thing. Uh, sometimes it is uh, told that uh, failure in this region uh, is connected with uh, internal crack initiation while uh, the classical uh, is uh, initiation from the surface in this region. Actually, we have observed uh, only surface crack initiation, uh, both in uh, high cycle and very high cycle uh, regimes. Uh, here you can see the specimen loaded with uh, amplitude of stress uh, 260. Here is the crack initiation and here is uh, the detail of surface crack initiation. The number of cycles to failure was uh, 187 million. And this could be the end, but uh, we have also observed uh, frequency dependence during the test. Uh, you can see here uh, the graph with frequency and number of cycles. Uh, during the testing, uh, we have observed quite rapid uh, increase of frequency in the beginning of the test. Uh, the number of cycles uh, is in logarithmic scale. So, so here the peak uh, is uh, about uh, 10 million of cycles, which is the first eight minutes of testing. And the following decrease is the following seven days. Uh, so this uh, quite rapid uh, increase uh, and also the, the decrease uh, probably relates to microstructure evolution during the testing and corresponding uh, changes in stiffness of the specimens. We believe that the, the increase uh, is connected to increased dislocation density in the beginning of the fatigue tests, and then following localization of plastic deformation and formation of sleeve bands uh, in the uh, later stages uh, corresponds to the decrease. Uh, analytical behavior we have observed also during uh, low cycle fatigue tests. Here you can see uh, micrographs uh, at the specimen uh, after reaching one billion of cycles. It is the from, from the central uh, part of specimen. Uh, maybe you can distinguish uh, several uh, directions of uh, uh, slip activity uh, and in the detail you can also see uh, a strain induced uh, alpha prime martensite. Uh, well, uh, it, is, it is after deformation uh, after 10 billion of cycles. So uh, let me conclude my presentation. Uh, we have performed high frequency fatigue tests uh, of stainless steels uh, of these two grades of three or four stainless steels. Uh, fatigue lifetime was analyzed where a slightly higher number of cycles 
to fracture was observed for the sphere number six. Uh, the same was uh, observed uh, for the uh, fatigue limit. Uh, the sphere number six has uh, fatigue limit uh, about 255, while the sphere number seven uh, is uh, 10 uh, megapascals lower. We have also monitored uh, frequency during the test and we have observed a steep increase of resonant frequency during the first 10 million of cycles, followed by very slow frequency decrease. Uh, this behavior uh, is connected to dislocation density increase and uh, following a localization of plastic deformation. And we believe that uh, knowledge of uh, the fatigue response of the studied stainless steels can contribute to more reliable design of steel structures like bridges and so on. Thank you for your attention.